Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor. Thank you for your continued support. Today's analysis video is going to begin a deep dive into the gorgeous environments of the Nancy Drew series. When I say environments, I'm talking about all of the gorgeous physical locations that Nancy uncovers and explores within the course of her investigations. For all but the most recent Nancy Drew game, these environments come in the form of two-dimensional spaces that players navigate through by pointing and clicking in the direction of their choosing. The art is three-dimensional, but are mostly artistic renditions. These artistically rendered spaces are crucial to each and every Nancy Drew game. The unique location and vibe of a Nancy Drew game is conveyed by the physical spaces that Nancy occupies, and if the spaces are not fully fleshed out, dripping with delightful details, or too closed off, well, then we lose some of that environmental power. And those are the Nancy Drew games that I would like to discuss today. While the vast majority of the Nancy Drew games, in my humble opinion, have expertly designed environments to explore, there are some that do leave me wanting. Today, I will be identifying the top 10 worst Nancy Drew game environments. And because this is my channel, you know I need to have some parameters. So what makes an environment, for lack of a better word, boring? For me, it comes down to three categories. First, and most important, how interactive is the environment? Can Nancy use multiple senses within each location of the game to find clues, explore, and learn about the case? Essentially, the more things that Nancy can find, look at, and examine, the better, because then it feels like the environment is beckoning us in. Locations that have few items or items in places that should be interactive but are not will receive a low score in this area. Second, are the environments designed in a way that visually expresses the location that Nancy is visiting, or do they feel generic, almost as though they could be plopped down anywhere and the mystery itself would not change? The environments should help clearly set the scene for the mystery, and those that do not will receive a lower score in this area. Third and final is the uniqueness or wow factor of an environment. Those environments that pay particular attention to detail, are fully explorable, have exciting reveals over time, or that have some sort of other grand and exciting element to them are most successful but environments that are bland or feel pretty standard are not, and will therefore receive a lower score in this category. Since we are ranking the top 10 worst environments, games with lower scores across the three categories will end up on this list. I will also be doing a ranking of the top 10 best environments, which will include the 10 games with the highest rankings. Ties will be broken in order of priority. Interactive, location-specific, and wow factor. Any true ties after that will be broken by my personal preference. Before we begin, here is your obligatory spoiler warning. Environments will be shown for the following 10 games and mild plot spoilers may be discussed. You have been warned. And without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Tomb of the Lost Queen. We are starting off our list with a game that I think actually has some pretty excellent environments, which is a testament to how good the environments of the Nancy Drew series truly are overall. Tomb of the Lost Queen gets three stars in the location category for giving us everything we need in terms of design that just screams Egypt sand, mummies, hieroglyphics, realistic looking tents, and an incredibly designed tomb. I would have liked some camels, but that's neither here nor there. The reason this game ends up on this list is because it gets a one in both other categories. The tomb is really shockingly bare of interaction. 
Nancy can interact with the tomb, certainly, but it's almost always for a puzzle. And any clues we find are almost also entirely for the puzzles. Very few of the clues are actually those that help us determine who done it. Similarly, there really isn't that much of a wow factor to the tomb. Once we've gotten past the fact that we are in a tomb, which happens almost immediately at the beginning of the game, the excitement wears off. Even the excitement of opening secret passageways loses its appeal because there are simply so many of them. Beautifully designed in terms of aesthetic, but the overall function of the tomb leaves a bit to be desired. Number nine, Phantom of Venice. This one may come as a shock, but think about it. How many things can you interact with at the Ca Nascosta? How many actual clues does Nancy pick up? Honestly, very, very few. You would think there would be all sorts of nooks and crannies to explore in a centuries old Venetian manor, but we essentially get no exploration within the walls of the Ca and without. We therefore get a one for interaction and also a one for wow factor. There isn't anything unexpected, unique, secret, or new about the environments of this game. Where it does shine, however, is in terms of expressing the location. The stone streets and buildings, gondolas, little markets, and the views from the Ca do enough to clearly convey that we are, in fact, in Venice, Italy, ready to enjoy singing gondoliers and endless cones of gelato three stars for the location, but the other scores bring it down enough to have Phantom of Venice make this list. Number eight, Trail of the Twister. Once again, we have a game with a three star location, but one star in each other category. Trail of the Twister does a great job of conveying a Great Plains state in the U.S., Oklahoma to be specific. The golden and green crops, the blue sky dotted with clouds, the farmhouse, the old fences, periodic tornadoes, and the wide open views of all the supplementary locations are excellent. But are they interactive? Not really. The only location that feels somewhat complete is the farmhouse, and even that only allows us to see a handful of rooms. Additionally, most everything we interact with is not an actual clue, but a puzzle or chore just waiting to be completed. Perhaps even more disappointingly, there's no real wow factor when it comes to the environmental design, which you would think would be the case when the game is focused around tornadoes and the damage that they do. Overall, Trail of the Twister does a great job aesthetically, but doesn't really engage us in exploration hardly at all. Number 7, Ransom of the Seven Ships. And again, we have another game with a three star location, but one star in the other categories. Hey, at least I'm consistent. Perhaps more honestly though, this game gets a 3 minus or a 2.5 for location because realistically, while we get all of the environmental effects I could want for a beach location, Dread Isle doesn't specifically scream Caribbean to me. However, we get beautiful pink sandy beaches, sharks, bats, coves, mountains, reefs, and monkeys and orcas and well there's a reason i said three minus anyway i also have to criticize these environments for having so little exploration value while we may get to look at lots of nice pretty things nancy almost never finds clues and when she does they are almost always only for you guessed it a puzzle there's also almost no wow factor to exploring the island once we've seen one pretty palm tree or beach on Dread Isle, then we've seen them all. We do get the fun reveal at the end of El Toro's secret hideaway, but even this feels pretty bland, and Nancy only looks at a handful of things. Overall, Dread Isle is fun to look at, but quite meh to explore.
Number 6. Creature of Kapu Cave My sentiments for Creature of Kapu Cave are quite similar to Ransom of the Seven Ships. A 3 minus for a location and 1s for the other two categories. The 3 minus is earned thusly. We get a beautiful beach, some nice palm trees, island designs, a jungle, and an ever so brief glimpse of lava and volcanoes. The message is definitely sent, hey, we're in Hawaii. But the environments only just accomplish this goal because the exploration of them is so limited. Nancy only actually interacts with a handful of things at each location, and all of the locations are quite small to begin with. An attempt at wow factor occurs with the design of Kapu Cave, except it doesn't really work because of how absurd it is in practice. It also isn't even explorable. Nancy can look at a few things, but otherwise she's just passing through the cave, barely taking in what could actually be a really cool environment if only there was more to do there. Once again, fun to look at, but really rather boring to explore. Number 5. Secret of the Old Clock We have now hit the point where the scores start to shift around a bit. Let's start with the fact that this game gets a 2 for location and a 2 for wow factor. The location of this game is unique in that the time period of the 1920s and 30s became a huge component of the setting. As such, the old-fashioned designs of the Lilac Inn and Josiah Crowley's home are quite excellent, and the hidden passageway connecting the two is a fun bit of wow factor. But beyond that, Secret of the Old Clock can't get a 3 from me in either category, because so much of the game is spent driving around a two-dimensional town with dozens of locations that we experience only through static, out-of-place photos or bird's-eye views. I also have to give Secret of the Old Clock a 1 for interaction, because Nancy barely looks at anything at the Lilac Inn, a location that should be bursting with clues, and is only able to take a cursory glance through a bunch of unrelated objects in Josiah Crowley's home. Effectively, the actual locations in this game are just way too small and way too sparse to elicit any higher scores from me. So here we stand. Number 4, Labyrinth of Lies Like Secret of the Old Clock, Labyrinth of Lies gets a 2 for location and a 2 for wow factor. We get some obvious visual environmental details to indicate Greece, namely the museum with a healthy collection of artifacts and the outside amphitheater. We also get an attempt at wow factor, and in my attempt to be objective, I will honor this game's attempt at impressing us with the bizarre theater sets. I cannot, however, in good conscience, give this game any higher than a 2 for either of those categories because, really, the location aspects and the wow factor are only superficial. I also have to give this game a 1 for interaction because basically everything, I'd wager 95% or more of the things that Nancy interacts with are only for a puzzle. Clues and hints to who done it are scarce, with only random books and papers left in their wake. It's particularly disappointing in a location that really could have gone all in on the archaeology angle. But oh well, say lovey. Number 3. The Silent Spy Is it really a wizard kitten ranking video if I don't get to bring up the ridiculous theater sets of Labyrinth of Lies as well as the completely unacceptable Ten Raven pub of The Silent Spy? The unexplorable pub is just one reason that this game ranks so low, but honestly, the rest of the locations don't do enough to earn a 3 from me either. I'll settle on a 2 because we do at least get beautiful stone courtyards as well as a nice, albeit very far off, look at Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond? Any Scottish fellow detectives please correct me in the comments. 
Anywho, there was a lot more the environments could have done in terms of Scottish vibes. I also give this game a 2 for wow factor because while some of the locations may initially have us be like, wow, or do something cool like transform into a secret spy cabin, the appeal is gone almost immediately afterwards. A big reason for this is the complete and utter lack of interaction, so a big ol' one in that category. This spy mystery relies very heavily on books, digital resources, journals, and puzzles, meaning that almost nothing that Nancy can interact with is a clue. She can look around her at pretty environments, but does it really mean anything if all we can do is stare? Number 2, Midnight in Salem. Are we surprised? I didn't think so. I would have given this game a 1 in all three categories except for its one and only redeeming factor. This game is supposed to take place in autumn, and there are in fact pretty autumn leaves all over, and we can add to the environments by making jack-o'-lanterns. I will give it that, and I will only give it that. So, I will give it a 2 only because it did the bare minimum of getting across New England looks gorgeous in the fall vibes. Otherwise, there is no wow factor, and all of the locations are laughable. You can look at approximately two things in the museum, two things in the Hathorne house, two things in the Perry house, and about two things in Luminous Infusions. Exploration who? Environmental design who? Clues who? <sighs> now I'm annoyed. Number 1, The Shattered Medallion. But I am ever so slightly more annoyed by this one. The only thing that saves The Shattered Medallion from getting a 1 in all three categories is the beautiful starry cave and subsequent raft ride at the end. It was pretty and cool, so I'll give it two stars for wow factor. Everything else is just plain bad or disappointing. If the game hadn't told me I was in New Zealand, I would not have known, because other than the names of the teams and staged competition tasks, nothing stands out about the location as unique. At least Midnight in Salem tried to give me autumn vibes. Is it too much to ask for a random Kiwi sighting, or I don't know, the actual sheep that I was promised? Additionally, the only things that Nancy interacts with are items that are required for the competition, meaning that clues are almost completely absent. Nancy doesn't interact with the world around her in this game. The environments are almost entirely static, and they have absolutely no character to them. It truly is a disappointment, and thus we have, at least in my opinion, the worst environments in the Nancy Drew series. But do you agree with me, fellow detectives? Which environments do you think we're lacking, and which ones do you predict will be among the best? What makes an environment successful for you? Let a wizard kitten know down in the comments. Ultimately, as I said at the beginning, most of the Nancy Drew environments are visually stunning and fun to explore. They become an integral part of telling the story, demonstrating the unique location, and helping the mystery come to life for us as detectives. Without a complete, cohesive, and interactive environment, the game suffers, which is why most, if not all, of the least liked games in the fandom as a whole ended up on this list. Moral of the story. A good environment is not a responsibility to shirk, not in the least. So there you have it, fellow detectives, the top 10 worst environments in the Nancy Drew series. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. And as always, Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.